Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to class. Um, this is another Verbling English class, and it's going to be a reading class this hour. Um, we're going to be reading an article that I took off of the National Public Radio website here in the United States. And it's an article that I thought was interesting. Um, it's something that happens here as well in the United States, and that is the discounting of books and Amazon and independent booksellers versus large chain stores. And so France is choosing to uh, limit their ability to um, give discounts. So I thought that would be an interesting topic of discussion, um, considering probably a lot of people who are on Verbling might also uh, sometimes buy books from Amazon or visit uh, local booksellers. So we're going to wait and see uh, who shows up. Um, I'm not sure, was there another class right before this one or not? I think maybe not. So we do have some reservations and we'll see who shows up. But in the meantime, hi there, Sukatara. Is that how you say your name? Yes, my name is Sakutara. Sakutara. Okay, Sakutara. And where are you from? I'm from Vietnam. Oh, wonderful. What part of Vietnam? I live in Hanoi. Oh, okay. And are you a student or do you work or what do you uh, do? I'm a civil engineer. Oh, okay. And I'm 27 years old. Uh-huh. So what do you do exactly as a civil engineer? Um, I design uh, house, uh, Vilna or resident house, resident mm -hmm. building. Resident, oh, okay. Like apartments or single, like homes or what type of houses do you design? Um, like apartment buildings uh, or? Yes, apartment building and uh, sometimes I design a villa, villa. Oh, okay. Villas for just like single families or lots of different families? Oh, single family. I think oh, okay. It's, it's nice. Small villas. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Are those uh, very popular in Vietnam? Yes, it's um, popular in Vietnam. Uh-huh. Nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Fausto. How are you doing this evening? Fausto is, if I remember, in Mexico. So, um, Sakutara, what time is it in Vietnam for you right now? Uh, it's um, 11 a.m. Oh, nice. That's a good time. 11 a.m. and it's Saturday for you. Oh, I think, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's Friday in, for me. Yes, <laughs> it, um, now it's uh, Saturday morning in the now. Yeah, okay. So you don't have to work today. Yeah, yes, I have a two day off. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Fausto, or do you have your microphone on? Yes, teacher, sorry, because my micro is working very well right okay. now. Okay. Uh, it was a lovely. Oh. So, yes. You turned it up. Good. Okay. Well, wonderful. We're just waiting a little bit of time here, welcoming people as they come in. So, uh, welcome to class. And Mauricio, how are you doing this evening? Hi, Lisa. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. And you? I'm doing well, thank you. Mauricio, where are you calling in from? I'm from Colombia. Oh yeah, Colombia. All right, good. And Yuki, wow, Yuki, are you staying up late? <laughs> it's very late, I think, in Moscow. Let me see, what time is it? Yuki? Oh, it's in early in the morning. Okay, never mind. It's already 8. You're waking up early. Hi, Edgar, how are you doing? Hello. 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 So Hi there. I'm, I'm fine, thank you. And you? I'm doing well, thank you. Hi everyone. Hello. Hi Yuki. Hello. Hi, it's eight o'clock in the Moscow now. Yeah, I was thinking it was uh, earlier in the morning, but eight o'clock is yes. pretty good. But it's a Saturday morning. <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, I I I will teach in, I will teach today Japanese. Uh, I have a Japanese class today. Really? So I, I have to get up early. Yeah. So it's Saturday. Yuki, um, do you teach children or adults? 
uh, to, for adults. For adults? For adults. Um, okay. uh, some of them uh, is student. Some of them are student of uh -huh. school or university. Uh, yeah. uh, others are uh, others are others are work, others are working. Others work. Others. Uh -huh. are, uh, others work. You could say others work. Others work. Or works. Others others work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Did I um is do a lot of people want to learn Japanese? Yes, uh, recently Japanese, uh, Japan, Japanese, uh, Japanese be became quite popular okay. in Russia because mm -hmm. uh, many Russians have strong interest in Japan. Uh, especially, uh, there are many Japanese restaurants uh, appear in oh. Moscow. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> and uh, and uh, many young people uh, ha are interested in anime. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's very yeah. popular here in the yeah. United States, too. <laughs> anime. Yeah, lots of uh, movies and anime yes. books. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, um, it's very, uh, sushi is very popular here in the United States. My kids yes, love I, sushi. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, are you in California now? Yeah. I am in Washington. Ah, Washington. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's oh. expensive though. <laughs> Sushi. Are there many Japanese restaurants there? Well, yeah, lots of Japanese restaurants. And in my town, my town is small. We only have nine thousand people, um, but we have two Japanese restaurants and a sushi and a, another sushi bar. So it's popular. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you afraid of having, uh, having a raw fish? No. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> some foreigners, some foreigners uh, are afraid of uh, trying raw yeah. fish. I, I, um, I, I trust that they're getting good fish, but um, I don't eat a lot of raw fish, but I like raw salmon. It's good. <laughs> Tuna. <laughs> Okay, well, we're just chatting a little bit while we were waiting for maybe to see if some other people show up. We did have um, eight reservations, but some people might show up a little bit uh, later, and that's fine. Um, if you click, I think everybody might have clicked already on the link here that opens up the document that we're looking at here, which we're going to be reading together, and probably we will have time to finish it and um, also discuss it a little bit. Um, I, it was a personal interest of mine to read this because um, I particularly like books. So I like books, but I buy a lot of books from, well, I get a lot of books from the library, which here in the United States is free. So you can go to the library and check out books for free. But when I want to buy books, I do use Amazon, and I also try to support local uh, bookstores. But it is hard to sometimes pay the normal book price when you can get it cheaper on Amazon. So that's kind of what this article is about and what the French are doing. So the way we'll do this is I will highlight something a little bit. Sometimes it's just one or two sentences, sometimes it's a paragraph. And then I will read out loud. And while I'm reading, you can read along with me in your mind or you can close your eyes and just listen. Um, it's up to you how you want to uh, do it. Um, and then you will read. So first let's start with the title. Little Libraire in French. That could. Okay, the little Libraire that could. That's a play on uh, the little train that could, which is a popular little kids book here in the United States um, about a little train who's trying to go up a hill. Uh, and, you know, he he doesn't think he can make it and he can, he can. So they're talking about the smaller bookstores. This word here means bookstore in French. And it says French law would keep Amazon at bay. So when you keep somebody or something at bay, it means they're, you're keeping them away from you. So they're not going to like attack you um, or hurt you or something like that. So that's what this article is about. How is the French government going to help the little 
libraires, the little bookstores, the independent booksellers is what we call them. All right, so I'll start here. Last, okay, well also I want to make sure everybody knows, I'm going to read and then you will read and then I will go over some of these words that I highlighted here like this. But if there's anything you don't understand, just ask me and I will help you. If you have any questions, just interrupt me to ask. Last year, the U.S. government took Apple to court, charging that the company illegally drove up the price of ebooks. This summer, Apple lost the case. In France, just the opposite is happening. The French government has accused Amazon of trying to push the price of physical books too low. Okay, Edgar, why don't you read that for us, please? The same? Yes. Okay. Last year, the U.S. government took Apple to court, charging that the company illegally dropped out the price of ebooks. This summer, Apple lost the case. In France, just the opposite, the opposite is happening. The French government has accused Amazon of trying to push to push the price of physical books too low. Mm -hmm. So when the phrasal verb here is to drive up, and this is the past tense, to drove, they um, drove up the price. So they're trying to increase the price. So Apple through their iBooks. Uh, store or application um, was trying to make the ebooks, the electronic books, higher. And so the government told them they couldn't make those higher. These are the, um, like what you can get on your Kindle, for example, or on your iPhone or iPad ebooks. In France, just the opposite is happening. So the French government accused Amazon. So they said to, they, when you accuse somebody of doing something, you are telling them, hey, you, this is what you are doing. And usually when you're accusing somebody of something, you're trying to um, tell them they're doing something wrong. So you're accusing them of doing something wrong, maybe illegal, um, something like that. There um, is no difference between charge and accuse. Um, yes. Accusing, yes. when you accuse somebody, you are telling um, them that they're doing it wrong, but you might be wrong. So it's not necessarily a charge. A charge would be more like if the if the court system found uh, Amazon oh. guilty, then they would be charged with like a fine or something, mm -hmm. or charged with doing something illegal. Yeah. But if you just accuse somebody, it means you're saying they did it, but maybe it might have to go to court to see if you're you're right and if you're backed up. Mm -hmm. So the French government is accusing Amazon. So they're saying Amazon is this is what you're trying to do, and they don't like it. So they think they're trying to push the price. We could say down, but in this case, he said uh, the uh, the art. Uh, sorry, <laughs> the uh, author of the article getting tongue tied. Um, she just said too low. So they're pushing the price too low. So here we have the price. We can drive it up or push it up to make it higher or we can push or drive it down to make it lower and what they're accusing Amazon of doing is making it too low and we're talking about the physical books not the ebooks so the ones that you actually can hold in your hands alright limiting discounts on books is one of the ways that France is trying to ensure the survival of its independent booksellers Jean-Paul Collet opened his bookstore, La Boucherie, 17 years ago in a historic neighborhood of Paris's left bank. Collet says he owes his survival to a 1981 law mandating that books be sold at the same price everywhere, with discounts limited to 5%. Okay, Fausto. Is your microphone on, Fausta? Okay, teacher, sorry. <laughs> no problem. Okay, limiting discounts on books is one of the ways that France is trying to ensure the survival of its independent booksellers. 
Jean-Paul Collet opened his bookstore La Boucherie 17 years ago in an historic neighborhood on Paris left bank. Colette say he wants he owns sorry his survival to a 1981 low maintaining that book be sold at the same price everywhere with discounts limited to five percent. Mm -hmm. So the French uh, government limits discounts on books. So they they are whenever you limit something, it's like you can only do it a little bit, only a certain amount. And the reason they're doing this is to ensure. In English, we have two types of um, insure. People say them the same way, pretty much. This other one is insure. But the way you know um, what the difference is is the insure with the I has to do with insurance. So if you want to insure your your house, for example, you're buying insurance. The other one means the same thing, basically, to en but it's to ensure. To ensure the survival. So to make sure that um, the bookstores can survive, that they can make it as a business, they limit the discounts. So he says that he owes his survival. So he wouldn't be able to still be in business if it weren't for that law is what he's saying. He owes his survival to this law which mandates. So the verb to mandate right there is is like a rule or a law. Whenever you mandate something, the government usually mandates things and they that's making people do things. So they are mandating that all the books have to be sold at the same price. And the most you can discount them, like during the holidays, maybe like around Christmas time, when you want to have a sale, is 5%. That way everybody is kind of, we say, playing on an even field. Um, nobody has an advantage. And that is helping these booksellers survive. Francis, I'm going to push that down right there. All right. Francis' one book price law saved bookstores in this country, he says. If tomorrow large chains began selling books at a 30% discount, like in the U.S., we independent booksellers would be finished. I'm going to read a little more. This month, France's lower house of parliament passed a bill prohibiting Amazon from author offering both a 5% discount on its books and free delivery, a combination the French culture minister likened to dumping. Amazon spent $2.8 billion on free shipping worldwide last year to gain a competitive advantage. All right. Mauricio? Okay. Uh, France, France one book price low saved bookstores in the country. He says if tomorrow large chains began selling books at a 30% discount, like in the U.S., we independent booksellers will be finished. This month, this month, France Lower House of Parliament passed a bill prohibiting Amazon from offering both a 5% discount on its book and fee delivery. A combination, uh, a combination, the French culture minister likened, 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 to likened dumping, yeah, likened. Likened to dumping, yeah. Amazon yeah. spent $2.8 billion on free shipping worldwide last year to gain a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. Good. So they have a one book price law. Every book has to be the same price. All right. So he says if tomorrow the large chains, so um, you guys probably have heard of uh, chain stores like the popular ones in the United States or something like Walmart or Target, uh, Home Depot. These are um, very large, uh, big. we call them big box stores, and they're chains, so they're everywhere. They're in all the big cities and even the small towns across the whole United States and even so in other countries as well. So that's what he's talking about when he's talking about the large chains. And this is what they do in the United States. They come in and they discount books. And so in the United States, it definitely has 
put out of business lots of independent or small booksellers, bookstores. So he says we would, over here he says we, I'm kind of mixing it up here, we and then would be finished. So it means they would be out of business. To be finished in business means you no longer have a business. You are out of business. This month, uh, France's lower house, of, okay, so prohibiting. So when you prohibit something, it's like the, the opposite of mandating. When you mandate something, it means somebody has to do something. Um, and when you prohibit something, it means you they can't do something. So they prohibit them from offering a bigger discount. So they offered a 5% discount and free delivery, and they said that was too much. They could not have that combination. Um, a short version of combination is combo. If you ever hear that word, combo, it means combination. So putting those two things together, the discount and the free delivery, that was too much. That was um, likened to dumping. So when you say it's if something is likened to, it's, it just means that that's what it's like. It's like dumping, um, meaning dumping a, a bunch of stuff onto the market so that you're making everything lower priced. And that's not going to benefit the small booksellers. And they were doing this, of course, worldwide for lots of money. $2.8 billion is what they spent. Um, and the reason why they were doing that is to gain a competitive advantage. To, to gain means to get to achieve um, and a competitive advantage in business speak is what you want usually <laughs> you want something that helps you get more business to be more competitive against your competitors the people the other stores that are selling books for example and you have an advantage something that they don't and that's what the French government doesn't want them to have so just down the street from his first bookshop Collet has opened a second one, La Petite Boucherie, for children. He was able to do so because of another aid package for independent bookshops offered by the city of Paris. Okay, let's see. Michael, you joined us. Would you like to read? Yes. Okay. Uh, just down the street from his first bookshop, Colette has opened a second one, La Petite Boucherie, for children. He was able to do so because of another aid package for independent bookshops offered by the city of Paris. Mm -hmm. So an aid package is something that helps. It just An aid is a help. So um, he was able to do that, and this is what it was. The city buys buildings in high-rent districts and offers booksellers leases at an affordable price. Lynn Cohen Solal the deputy mayor in charge of independent commerce says the city tries to keep a core of 300 independent bookstores. Okay, Sakutara. Okay. <clears throat> the city just is buys building in high rent district and uh, offer booksellers list and uh, as an affordable price. Len Cohen Slowler, the deputy mayor in charge of independent commerce, says the city tried to keep a core of three, uh, 300 independent bookstores. Mm -hmm. Good. So the city buys these um, buildings in high rent districts. So I imagine you guys understand that. Just areas, districts are like neighborhoods. Um, neighborhoods where usually the buildings are very expensive, maybe very fancy perhaps, um, but they like to offer them or give them to uh, business owners, booksellers in particular, at affordable prices. So much less than what um, you know they could get otherwise because it's in such a nice neighborhood. Um, but they give them a lease, which means they rent the building from them. And uh, they can afford to have nice little bookstores or small bookstores in these nice um, neighborhoods or districts. And that's something that Paris likes. And it says they try to keep 300 of these um, smaller bookstores. Um, commerce, you guys probably know that has to do with business. Uh, we have to keep our identity, she says, because if we don't, all the shops are exactly the same in Paris, in London, 
in New York, in New Delhi, everywhere. Customer Emmanuel Ducros, who is browsing in Collet's children's bookstore, says she can't imagine Paris without its small bookshops. Okay, Yuki. Yes. Uh, sorry, from. Uh, uh, we have kept our identity right there. All yeah, that. We have, we have to keep our identity, she says, because if we don't, all the shops are exactly the same in Paris, in London, in New York, in New Delhi, everywhere, everywhere. Customer Emmanuel Ducros, who is browsing in college children's bookstore, said she, she can't imagine Paris without its small bookshops. Mm -hmm. Good. So they have to keep their identity. So Paris has a unique identity. It is known um, for independent bookstores, of course, bakeries, that type of thing. And, and that's a big part of why people want to travel there and go there as a tourist destination. Um, and she wants to keep it that way. She wants to keep it unique. So she does not want it to be exactly the same as in everywhere else. Um, so here the word browsing is just like when you're walking through the bookstore and you're just looking around. Maybe you pull a book out and look at it. You're just looking around is what we can also say. So there's something intimate about browsing in a small bookstore and the special attention and advice you get from the bookseller is invaluable, Decros says. You can't get that in a large chain much less online. In the 1998 romantic comedy You've Got Mail, Meg Ryan plays an independent bookseller threatened by a giant bookstore chain owned by Tom Hanks. All right, Chow, you want to read that? Can you help me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, should I? There is something intimidating. In in okay. Intimate, yeah. Intimate, okay. There mm -hmm. is something intimate about browsing in a small bookshop, and the special attention and advice you get from the bookseller is invaluable. Uh, that process, you, you can't get that in a large chain, much less online. Uh, in the 1998 romantic comedy, You've Got Mail, McRoy plays an independent bookseller threatened by a giant bookstore chain owned by Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. Good. So there's something intimate. So when something is intimate, it, it means it's very um, close. You know, so usually we use the word intimate, like with um, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you have a very intimate relationship, you're very close. But in this case, intimate means like um, it's small. It's small, it's friendly, you can talk one-on-one -on -one to the person who owns the bookstore, whereas the big chain stores, the big box stores, they are considered not intimate. It's like the opposite of intimate. You're kind of like a one person in a sea of all this stuff and nobody knows anybody and there's people walking around everywhere and sometimes you might, like if you're at a big huge Walmart store, there are people there that can help you but it's not really very intimate. It's not small and like cozy or something. It's just huge. Comfortable, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, intimate is more like more comfortable, but it, it means more like it's just um, friendly. It's, yeah, Personal. friendly. Yeah, and it kind of gives you the idea that it's um, you're close together. You know, like and mm -hmm. you can imagine in a small bookstore, maybe it's not very big, right? So everything is everybody has to be a little bit closer to each other. Whereas mm -hmm. in a big huge store, it's like there's so much room. You know, people are you can be way across the whole store. You're like a block away <laughs> or something. You know, yeah. yeah, and she's saying that's invaluable. So it's very, it's it is invaluable. She like, um, you can't even buy that. It's so it's worth so much to her. Um, and then they talk about this movie. Did anybody see this movie? You've got mail. It was pretty popular, a long time ago. No, I haven't seen. It's a it's a cute little movie if you ever want to look it up. Um, but that was the plot. So it was a romantic comedy. So Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. And they fall in love, I think. But the whole thing is she owned a little bookstore, 
and it was being threatened, which means it was um, maybe going to close down because Tom Hanks, um, he was owning or he was going to build a giant bookstore right there, or maybe he they already did, I can't remember the movie, but um, yeah, and so it was, you know, it was a lot of people started going to the huge bookstore and was going to put her little bookstore out of business. Um, just 15 years later, so he's referring, or she, the author is referring to after this movie, uh, just 15 years later the terrain has shifted so much that it's the big chains now fighting to survive in a world increasingly dominated by internet book sales and ebooks. Digital books are less popular in France where they make up less than 2% of book sales compared to more than 6% in the US. For now, Amazon is the biggest threat to small booksellers in France. Okay. Edgar? Yes. Okay. Just 15 years later, the terrain has shifted so much that it's the big chains now fighting to survive in a world increasingly dominated by internet book sales and ebooks. Digital books are less popular in France, where they make up less than 2% of book sales, compared to more than 6% 6% in the US. For now, Amazon is the biggest threat to small booksellers in France. Yeah. So the terrain has shifted. So that just means kind of like another word is the playing field. The terrain usually talks about the land, but in this case it's like the landscape of business or in particular of book sales. So this has shifted or it has changed so much. And so now the big chains are fighting to survive. So I don't know if you guys know, um, but there was a bookstore called Borders Books and they went bankrupt. They used to own huge bookstores in different cities around the country and slowly um, they closed up. Now we have still Barnes oops, Barnes and Noble is another one. Um, they still have those bookstores around but Amazon is certainly um, uh, you know, putting a lot of bookstores out of business. So they're fighting to survive in a world increasingly dominated. So it's dominated by internet book sales, by Amazon mostly, but other other uh, book sites as well, and ebooks. So, for example, on iTunes maybe or iBooks, I guess you can buy ebooks, you can buy Kindles, you can buy Nooks. All of those um, things are very. Um, very much of interest to American consumers, so they're taking over. Digital books are less popular in France, so really Amazon is the biggest threat right now because they are trying to discount the physical books, and that is what France does not want to allow them to do. Tourists often marvel at the number of rich and varied bookstores along Paris streets. Right across from Notre Dame Cathedral is one of the city's most famous independent bookstores, Shakespeare and Company. Okay, Fausto. Okay, yes, teacher. Tourists often marvel at the number of rich and varied bookstores along Paris Street. Right across from Notre Dame Cathedral is one of the city's most famous independent bookstores, Shakespeare and Company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when tourists are there, they marvel. That means they're like amazed. They're looking around going, wow, this is awesome. So they're marvel at the number of rich and varied bookstores. So um, it's not that there are just a lot of them, but they're, they're very rich. In this case, it would mean there's lots of different bookstores. There's a big variety. Um, you can go and find all kinds of different neat types of books. So that's... Um, very um, different than most um, cities these days, uh, especially for people who live in the United States. To go to Paris and be able to go through all these little bookstores is a very fun thing to do and certainly lots of people go to Shakespeare and Company. I've been there before and it's just fun to go to um, find new things that you don't see other places. Inside every inch of space is crammed with books and readers. David Kopitsky who is visiting from Wisconsin says he much prefers picking a book from a shelf to ordering it online or reading it on a screen. All right. 
uh, Mauricio. Inside every inch of space is crammed with books and readers. David Kovic, who is visiting from Wisconsin, says he must prefer picking a book from a shelf from, from a shelf to ordering it online or reading it on a screen. Mm -hmm. So if something if books are crammed, if anything is crammed in, that means like there's a bunch of books on a shelf and they're all in there tight. Maybe they you get the image of books falling off the shelf or something like that. So anything that's crammed, it's like put into a small space really tightly. And so that's what you see when you go to this bookstore. Just books everywhere and readers checking out the books. And, and so he says he likes to pick them off the shelf. So the shelf is the bookshelf where you put your books. Um, he doesn't like to order them online or read it on a screen. I am perhaps old-fashioned, but I love the touch of books and the knowledge that what was it that was said on page 42? I can quickly pass back to page 42 and find exactly what I wanted to remember. That's different in Kindle. Okay, Michael. I'm perhaps old-fashioned, but I love the touch of the of book, books and the knowledge that what what was it uh, that what was it that was said on page 42? Mm -hmm. I can quickly pass back to page 42 and find exactly what I wanted to remember. That's different in Kindle. Mm -hmm. So the Kindle, you guys probably know, is the Amazon reader, ebook reader. Um, yeah, so anytime people talk about um, liking uh, the way things used to be, they call themselves old fashioned or that is old fashioned. So you know, books nowadays seem old-fashioned because now we have technology, we can carry around books on our little iPhones or iPads or Kindles, and so books for some people seem outdated or old-fashioned, but of course people like my age and older um, like books still. <laughs> like the feel of books and things like that. Okay, the bill limiting Amazon's price reductions in France still has to pass the Senate to become law. In a statement, Amazon said any effort to raise the price of books diminishes the cultural choices of French consumers and penalizes both internet users and small publishers who rely on internet sales. Okay. Sakutara? Okay. The bill limiting Amazon's price production in France still has to pass the Senate to become law. In a statement, Amazon Amazon says any effort, any efforts to raise the price of books diminishes uh, the cultural choice of uh, friends, consumers, and penalize both internet user and small publisher who rely on internet sales. Yep. All right, so by limiting Amazon's price reduction, so a price reduction is when you reduce, that's the verb, to reduce the price, you lower the price. Um, so they're trying to, you know, say that um, if you don't allow them to do that and then they have to raise the price, they have to make it higher, then this is going to diminish the cultural choices. Another word for diminish would be um, lessen. So they say um, it's going to lessen the cultural choice lessens the cultural choices of French consumers, the people who are buying the books, and penalizes. Another word for penalizes is punishes. So um, you know they're they're Sorry, saying what, that it's what the what the cultural choices mean here. Culture, yeah, exactly. This, this is kind of a things. it's kind of a. Um, it's a business, it's kind of an interesting choice of words that Amazon has because does it, mm. do, so they're basically cultural choices. I don't know why they put in there cultural, maybe they're mm. meaning just mm. because books is part of culture, so, or yes. the types of books, um, maybe some people won't be able to afford them if they're at the regular rate. So basically they're saying that if you make us raise our prices, then you're going to lessen the amount of choices and the types of books that people can buy. So the consumer mm -hmm. will be hurt because maybe they won't actually be able to afford to buy different types of books that we offer at less price or lower prices. 
And um, it's also going to penalize or punish um, the Internet users, so people who like to or prefer to use the Internet rather than going to a bookstore. And it's also going to penalize or punish um, small publishers. So publishers are the ones who make the books. Um, of course, there are huge publishers, but a lot of um, people nowadays self-publish or they have small publishing companies that publish books that wouldn't be picked up by the large publishing houses. So um, Amazon is saying, they are arguing, that they give the small publishers a way to get out in the public. And these small publishers rely on um, internet sales. So that means it, they need internet sales to make money on their books. So that's what um, they're what talking about. What is uh, the bill mm -hmm. about? Okay. So, yeah, you came in a little late. So what, what we read about up here is that um, France actually has a law already. It's called the One Book Price Law. So what it says is that all the books in um, France, all of the same books, so like a Harry Potter book, in, in every mm -hmm. bookstore in France, it has to be the same price. You know, so if it's five dollars, ten dollars, whatever, it has to be that whether or not you're in Paris or Marseille or wherever, and and you can only um, discount it five percent at the most. So if your bookstore is going to have a sale, you can discount it, but only five percent. You can't go mm -hmm. lower than that. And so uh, what, what is, is the yeah? So what what Amazon was doing is they were offering two things right here. They were offering both a five percent discount on its books and free delivery. Mm -hmm. So that was like too too much. That combination was too much. And so France wants to make sure that they don't do that and they want to also make sure that they don't go any lower. Mm -hmm. And so and yeah. What is the what is the idea of this law? I mean, uh, what pl pluses will bring to cars consumers or to publishers if uh, the price will be equal in all cities of a book and yeah. uh, the discount only 5%. What is the well, what, it, what it's for is actually yeah. helping small bookstores survive. So for the consumer you could argue well it's it's not allowing them to get a cheaper book. That's true. But if if um, Amazon sells the same books at much cheaper um, prices, then basically they're arguing that the independent booksellers will go out of business. And when there are no longer any independent booksellers, then the the identity of France and especially Paris will change. That's what they're saying. In Paris, they like to have um, 300 independent um, bookstores. Because it's part of their culture, it's part of their unique um, uniqueness. It's part of tourism. When people go to Paris, part of the unique identity of being in Paris is to go into the little bookstores and shop around and look at things. So um, that's what the article was basically okay. talking about. Yeah. Clear. Yeah. Did you get it? Okay. It's okay. sure. Okay, so I'm wondering, what do you guys think about this? Should Amazon do whatever they want to do, or should the French government be um, watching them and um, basically controlling the market? Anybody have any ideas? Yeah, well, could I say something? Yeah, sure, ciao. Well, I, I don't think the government should put any punishment on the Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's it just like it, it hurt the price adjustment system. I mean, it is just like a central planning. It is not, it is not capitalism. It is just more like a communism mm -hmm. uh, system. So, oh, that's the price computation. Well, mm -hmm. you said you're, you're, you're protecting your own um, domestic uh, bookshops, but you hurt the consumers. Well, the consumers will, the, the shops will put a higher price on that. So the consumer need to pay the higher price. And well, so oh, it is just make no sense to put such a higher price and let the consumer to pay for. And I don't think the they should push up the price. In setting of that, they need to put down the price. Maybe they need some subsidy for the domestic shops, but it is too too much to to punish the Amazon to push up the price. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Does anybody agree or disagree I, with Trump? I think I um, I respect the policy of France to mm -hmm. uh, to protect uh, the protect French culture. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, of course I. I don't think it is a good idea to uh, restrict the uh, discount of Amazon to mm -hmm. protect uh, bookstores, small bookstores in, in uh, pretty small bookstores in Paris. But uh, there is no option to uh, there is no option than take such a measure to protect the bookstores because Amazon is too Amazon has too many powers and mm -hmm. and um, they, they uh, Amazon has only uh, only online shops so its cost is uh, is quite they can they can lower the cost to sell so um, small shops uh, small local shops local book shops uh, mm -hmm. uh, have not wait to protest uh, amazon's amazon's um, vast power <laughs> yeah right yeah so <clears throat> I put in the chat. Um, so, what if all small bookstores just go out of business and we only have Amazon, for example? Is that okay? Like, do we just care as consumers about getting the cheapest books, even if we don't have any bookstores around, or, or what? We'll what be, do you guys think, uh, bookstores. Michael? Yes, will be. Uh, will not be uh, this um, kind of thing that only Amazon will be. Uh, they will would have uh, comp competitors like, like they said, like uh, bookstores where you can go and fill the book, uh, mm -hmm. talk with the uh, seller, uh, intimates, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and these kind of things. And yeah. also, I would like to say that uh, um, to produce books are not so uh, uh, ecologically friendly. So <laughs> yeah, people should it. think about that to to start to read books on their computers, maybe or. Maybe like to print uh, the book from computer and to read only the book uh, what they want to, to read. Uh, maybe how how is uh, is uh, for them it's comfortable. But uh, for example, as far as I know, to print these books, mm -hmm. there are a lot of books they print. So a lot yeah. of trees they cut down. That's so, true. Yeah. So you will not have with what to what you right. you do. Right, so I that's definitely um, yeah. one of the arguments that people make about um, technology is that, you know, yes, while it might be nice to hold a book and to open a book and go through the pages and stuff, it does take resources, specifically trees um, and water and all that kind of stuff. Um, but that's where that word old-fashioned came in that Nihon doesn't want to talk about <laughs> because... Um, you know, sometimes it's hard for people to change their minds and their ideas and get used to different ways of doing things. So it sounds like you think, Michael, there will probably still be some bookstores around because people who like that will still support those kind of bookstores, but maybe going to more electronic books is better anyways. Yes, and also you can um, listen to a book. For example, uh, Absolutely, for me, yeah. it's uh, very um, comfortable to listen to yes. a book, not to, to read. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people prefer um, audiobooks these days. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think, Mauricio? I think that, yes, I think it's true because um, it is just business interest because... Mm -hmm what the a small book uh, stores are doing is to help um, uh, the people to get the uh, books uh, less expensive um, in that way to help the community but I think that um, the government is against off and um, they prefer that the community pay for it um, in an expensive way and then they are getting more money or things like those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Edgar, about um, the government kind of controlling business this way? Chow comes from China, and so he has the experience of living in uh, a country where the government does control business in many ways. 
I'm wondering, Edgar, what, what do you think? Is it a good thing or not a good thing? Well, it depends because mm -hmm. is, is, if they are referring to people, uh, to books written in French, that could be interesting, but if it includes books written in English, maybe they could buy the book in another country uh, and bring it to and take it to the to France, and nothing will be that will be done. Mm -hmm. no, not a benefit in, in in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's right. a very conservative idea from the government. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the this is the interesting uh, thing about we could say politics is what is the government you know for what do we does the government represent everybody do they represent the business do they only do what's good for business um, or do they do other things like what's good for people's health or what's good for maintaining a tradition or a type of culture or something like that and and who who is the government meaning like who is making these decisions and of course as people live and die. <laughs> new people come in, so new governments are there as well, making choices for the new generation. So um, it's it's a it's an unknown thing because as cultures change, um, lifestyles change. So of course, uh, a long time ago, a hundred years ago, we had a different lifestyle, and in a hundred years, we might have a completely different lifestyle, and it will be based on the choices that people are making right now such as what we're talking about a little bit in the chat. Will there be no more books? Is that a good thing? Are we saving trees? But what about the technology that needs to um, be produced or created to read books on ebooks um, or like Kindles or something like that? That takes a lot of resources and we throw them away and they're toxic. So is it really a better choice? Like who who can say? But you use them uh, five just... years. <coughs> Sorry, go ahead, please. You can, yeah, you can use them five years, but a, uh, you can plant a new tree and you can use a book for a thousand years and you can then just compost it. For example. Actually, I'm curious about not the books or yeah. ebooks. I'm curious yeah. about the readers. <laughs> In an hundred year, like is there Kindle, any yeah. reader? Kindle reader, <laughs> yeah. Or maybe, maybe. In the future, they can just put a chip in our brain and download all the books, and then we won't have to go anywhere. <laughs> Do Maybe we government. don't need information anymore. Maybe we don't need any more books. Right, we just go back to telling each other stories. It will be a revolutionary idea. <laughs> no, but you said that Kindle, like uh, uh, a book you can uh, keep uh, 100 years, but in, Kindle, in that Kindle you can read 100 books to, without to cut any tree. And yeah. you use that Kindle, for example, five, ten years you can use, uh, theoretically, let's say. Yeah. So it's not so much uh, uh, production waste and uh, things like that for me. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't know, but what about getting rid of them too? Then you have to throw them away and get and then get rid of them. So here's like that's a Kindle. That's what we're talking about right there. And and er almost every year they come out with a new one too. So. You might keep it for five years, but you might yeah. also want to buy a new one. Well, why? It depends on each person, so maybe yeah, I will sure. keep 20 years. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> if, <laughs> if the software still works. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. There's. Um, I don't think anybody has a definitive answer which one is better, which one is more environmentally friendly or something. Um, it just, yeah, says, save the, uh, okay, so, what about libraries? Okay, Nihon, you wrote libraries, and in, in French, the word is librairies, and in, in English, it's book shop or bookstore, but then there's also the actual libraries in the United States, which, where you can, um, you can check out, we call it checkout books, for free. So a lot of people just use the library. They don't even have to buy a book. They just go get them for free. But that's interesting because uh, it shows you that people still want to buy things because 
the libraries didn't put out the booksellers, put them out of business before, you know. People still go and buy books even though they could probably, in a lot of cases, get the same book, you know, and read it and then take it back to the library for free. So. No, I prefer to buy the books because uh, mm -hmm. I, li I like to highlight the, the paragraphs or something yeah. or add something to the book. But um, actually, the, the main problem is that we are talking, it's not ebooks or books. There, there isn't any uh, really um, profound reader anymore. Uh, they all, all just want to read something briefly on Twitter or on, on Facebook, but they don't like to read. Also, they bought some ebooks, and in that ebooks, there are, let's say, 10,000 or 20,000 uh, new books, but they don't uh -huh. need to uh, read that books because they are already or, and on there, and uh, mm -hmm. there's a mm, there's a really, really close distance to click a back button on Amazon to yeah. to get that book, but they didn't read it. Yeah. Are you saying that people nowadays aren't much, um, they don't like to read that much? Yeah, like, yeah. Full, they full only book? want to possess it. They, on, they only, oh, only want okay. to own it, not to, to read own it. it. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Well, let's take also, a little... Also, uh, you okay. lose the possibility if, uh, if you only use uh, e-book shops. Uh, when you... Uh, um, possibility to find uh, uh, unexpected books uh, which you would, yeah. would, would, would love it. If you uh, go to book sh stores, you, uh -huh. you, if you, you love you 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 will be browsing in yeah, in, yeah. in the books uh, among the bookshelves. So maybe maybe you can find uh, books uh, uh, um, unexpectedly. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna <laughs> your I'm favorite gonna... books. Yeah. Uh, I think now uh, now in 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 the in the electronic bookshops. Uh, there are such a such a such a possibility. There is little such a possibilities. Uh, although uh, in in electro in ebook sto stores ha there are recommendation, so mm -hmm. you can follow the follow the others opinion, and you can choose such such a recommended book. But uh, um, Accidentally, you, yeah. you can't fi you can find books only in bookshop stores. Yeah. I think so. I I I, I uh, from childhood I was I was so fond of storing uh, bookstores. Uh, they are a very big uh, book uh, big uh, street of bookstores uh, in Tokyo. Uh, this is Kanda. Uh, it, it is very pleasant to uh, walk along the streets and and hunting hunter books. So I understand uh, what 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 uh, someone said said in this uh, articles. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I, I'm putting up a picture here of a bookstore that's a very popular, famous bookstore in Portland, Oregon, and it's called Powell's Books. And it's like a block, a city block long, and it has books, just all kinds of books, new and used, all different topics, um, in different foreign languages even. And it's a huge bookstore, and I really, I spent over two hours there um, on Monday, but I didn't buy anything. Uh, sometimes I do. I, bu I bought a couple of French books the last time I was there, but it was it was. Um, uh, definitely very fun, and yes, I sell lots of books that I wouldn't probably ever look up on Amazon, but I could see them, and they were displayed, and they had like uh, little reviews about them and stuff, and so it opened me up to a lot of other possibilities for books that I might not have ever um, looked for or known about. So um, that, that's a really valuable thing to have. It, at least if you have one of those in a big city, then... I mean, it's a huge store. It's not. It's an independent bookstore. It's not a chain, um, but it's a. It's a pretty cool, cool place to spend a couple of hours. So, yeah. All right, you guys. Well, um, this hour is over. Um, I'm going to be doing the next hour as well, and the next hour is actually writing class, and it's different than I usually do it. 
it's a creative writing class. So you're going to be able to write a story, and then we're going to read them out loud to each other. So it'll be quiet for about the first 10, 15 minutes or, or so um, when people are writing their stories, and then we'll get to talk about them, and I will help correct the writing and stuff. So if you're interested in telling a story, it could be a funny story, a sad story, an amazing story, an adventure story. It's short, but... Um, whatever you'd like. If you want to come, then I'll be there, and I have to uh, finish this class and start that one. So, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for coming. Yeah. Okay, thanks see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye -bye. take care. Go read some books. <laughs>